going to do my best to cover all kinds of information as quickly as possible. But as I mentioned, our, our ministry, you can reach it at genesisapologetics.com. Quite simply, we have two different main offerings. Our first is for fifth to 10th graders, because in the state of California, uh, kids in public school are subjected to over 250 pages of evolution teaching before graduating uh, high school. And then if uh, you have a student that's getting ready to go to college, 11th grade or higher, we have our seven myths program on the right side of the screen. And that's to equip them with uh, evidence to support the historicity of God's word starting on the first page. So that's just a quick overview of our ministry. So I'm going to be giving a very fast hyperspace uh, tour really at the, at, the, at the forest level of Noah's flood and dinosaurs. But if you'd like to get more information, please go to our website there slash dinosaurs, or you can go to the following video on YouTube. This is one of our leading videos. We produced it by collectively working with the leading flood geologists from the leading creation ministries in the world. It now has about 2.5 million views, and I'll be covering some of the highlights that are, are gonna be featured in this, uh, that are featured in this video on YouTube. Okay, so when I worked as a testifying expert in federal and state court cases, we would often look at what's called an evidence mosaic, and that's simply when you have many different lines of evidence that really point to the same reasonable conclusion. And when you look at Noah's flood, we do have a evidence mosaic. It's quite clear. We look at the extent of the fossil record, coupled with the furious burial of dinosaurs, the fact that they're buried in the mud that killed them. They're also buried with ash. Uh, they're, they're, they're buried um, all, I can't see that part of my screen. There we go, buried in groups. And then we have uh, buried with marine fossils, buried without young. We have 15 fresh bioorganic materials that are found in dinosaur bones. We'll be reviewing that. We find carbon-14 in dinosaur bones, and we have dinosaur mummies. So those are the 10 things we'll be covering uh, really quickly today. So these certainly go to explain a worldwide flood that is very exactly uh, explained by what the Bible talks about in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. So the biblical view, in short, is simply that on the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that very day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of heaven were opened. And we, we can know that that happened today by what's called the process of catastrophic plate tectonics, where we have massive tsunamis that are being brought up on the North American continent, continents all over the world. But it's from catastrophic linear rifting that happened on a 40,000 mile radius around the Earth enough to cover the earth about one and a half times. And it was that very linear rifting and seafloor spreading that caused subduction, that caused rapid cycling tsunamis to bring muddy uh, water up on the North American continent and again, all the other continents really quickly in ways that was uh, resulted in the demise of the dinosaurs. We know this today because we can take scans of the deep earth and see the Farallon plate, which was the first image that just showed up, and we also know that there's this thing called the, the Shatsky Rise, the conjugate Shatsky Rise, which is an oceanic volcanic plateau that came across from the southwest up underneath the North American continent. And when that happened, it was very instrumental in killing the dinosaurs in a huge kill zone that involved three countries, 14 or 15 states, and about 1,800 miles long by 1,000 miles wide. That whole swath of the area there in the middle of America was wiped out when catastrophic rifting happened in the beginning stages of the flood. Now, the secular idea is that when the Farallon plate subducted, which they agree that it, that it did, they think it was a very slow process that somehow resulted in nothing. The dinosaurs are sitting there living in the middle of America while this catastrophic Farallon plate is subducting rapidly underneath the North American continent, but the secular view is that it didn't result in any of the killing of the dinosaur because they think that an asteroid falling in the Yucatan Peninsula some 65 million years ago, which was 1,800 miles away from the kill zone, resulted in all these dead fossils in the middle of America. 
buried under hundreds and hundreds of feet of mud, as seen here in the Cretaceous layers. That's where B. rex was found, a, a T. rex. And these, somehow these creatures were buried by hundreds of feet of mud by an asteroid that supposedly fell in a single location 65 million years ago that's about 2,000 miles away from where these dinosaurs are found. We certainly think that the flood provides a much better explanation. So when we look at these 10 different lines of evidences, as we go through them quickly, you'll see how a catastrophic worldwide biblical flood is a much better explanation than the evolutionary idea of millions of years. The first one is the vast extent of this fossil record. Again, if you just look at North America, here we have the Jurassic fossils shown in the bluish color and the green yellow is the Cretaceous fossils. We have three partial countries, a million square miles, 14 states of these dinosaurs that are buried catastrophically in mud and ash layer. How would an asteroid in the Yucatan Peninsula be responsible for burying all these creatures in hundreds of feet of mud. We don't think it makes much sense because if you look at the Allosaurus shown by all those dots, all those creatures were buried, all the sauropods were buried in the middle of America, Stegosaurus, same things. And then we they're all buried in similar areas. You can see there are all these overlapping circles here in the middle of America where these creatures were buried in hundreds of feet of mud same with the hadrosaurs, and when you look back, you can see the Jurassic layers bought it first. They were covered with these, this, this oceanic rifting that happened, and the Cretaceous layers are on top of these Jurassic layers. So it was a phased process that left one big dinosaur peninsula. That's where we find the majority of the dinosaur footprints with shelves on the left and on the right. And I know I'm covering a lot of evidence quickly, but that's an overview of what happened on our own very continent during Noah's flood. Next, we see that these dinosaur fossils were furiously buried and disarticulated. Here's a, a, a book called Bone Beds. It's a secular book that catalogs about a thousand flood mega beds that are all over the place with huge bone beds laid down. And they admit that about 70% of these massive graveyards were laid down by a, a watery flood process. Here's a book by Carl Werner called Evolution, the Grand Experiment, where he uh, goes through and does some research and says that 97% of the dinosaur fossil record in North America is disarticulated. So some type of scrambling blender happened to these creatures that buried them in hundreds of feet of mud over a 13 or 14 state area. We can know this because, again, here's a clip from 60 Minutes. We have this B. rex buried under hundreds of feet of mud in Montana, and that's typical of most dinosaur fossil graveyards that are found in North America. And they're often found in the famous dinosaur death pose with their necks arched, arched back, choking and gasping for air as they, were, as they were dying. So you have to ask yourself the question, if these creatures were buried in mud, how much mud would it take to bury them? And where did that mud come from? If it wasn't a huge worldwide watery process, where are you gonna get megatons worth of mud? So here's the largest dump truck in the world. You can fit two buses in this thing. And here's Dreadnoughtus, a huge sauropod dinosaur. You have to ask the question, how many dump buckets of mud would it take to bury this sauropod dinosaur? But this isn't typical of just this fossil find. This is worldwide and it's on North America. These creatures were buried in enormous volumes of mud. You have to ask where did it all come from and how much would it take? It would take a worldwide flood to do this. Nothing else can explain it. They're also found buried in ash. And we'll show a quick 30 second from our video here that it describes how ash uh, contributed to the demise of the dinosaurs. Widespread volcanism is also involved in this process with massive volcanic activity escaping from tears within and along the edges of the subducting plate traveling from west to east. This explains massive dinosaur graveyards preserved in sediments mixed with volcanic ash. One section of the Morrison Formation, called the Brushy Basin Member, spreads across five states and includes over 4,000 cubic miles of volcanic materials. Without a 
single volcano in the Morrison Formation area. Geologists believe this material had to be carried all the way from volcanoes on the west coast. So it was that subduction that created all the volcanic activity on the west coast of America that spewed all kinds of ash and was carried over into the mid middle parts of America that contributed to burying all these dinosaurs. And there's just enormous volumes of ash. So that's what these creatures are found in and a matrix of usually sandstone, mud, and ash. They were also found simultaneously buried in groups. And one of the amazing examples we can find of this is up in Canada, Dinosaur Provincial Park, where all these hoodoos are revealed there. There's a 14 mile area there where tens of thousands of Ceratopsian dinosaurs bought it at the same time. You have to ask yourself this question, what could bury 14 miles worth of Ceratopsian dinosaurs, tens of thousands of them fleeing for their lives, and they're buried with fish, turtle, marsupials, and amphibians. It would take a global catastrophe to pull that off. Uh, we also find them frequently buried with marine fossils. We can go to museum signs all over this area in the northern part of uh, North, North America, and they're buried with shark teeth. They talk about ancient floods with starfish buried at the same time. They call it flash floods, but they're frequently found buried with marine life. Here's another example of where we find shark teeth in the, uh, in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. So there, somehow the ocean was brought up into land, blenderized, and they were, these creatures were buried in hundreds of feet of mud. Another interesting piece of evidence that I've found is uh, Mr. Jack Horner, who's a famous paleontologist, found a very strange burial situation in the Cretaceous layers where they found a huge bed of myosaur dinosaurs. It's a type of a duck-billed dinosaurs. They found a 1.25 mile stretch long going from east to west of these dead dinosaurs, and they found 10,000 adult myosaur and zero young. How do you pull that off? How can you bury a herd of 10,000 adult dinosaurs? All the dinosaurs they found were between nine and 23 feet, feet long, but zero young, zero teenagers, zero youth, no babies. How do you do that? You have to uproot and cause a whole herd of these dinosaurs to be fleeing for their lives before they were buried by a catastrophic flood. And there are some references there on that if you'd like to take a look later. Next, we find one of the most convincing things that actually was instrumental in flipping me into becoming a young earth creationist is these strange biomaterials that are found in dinosaur bones. In fact, it used to be 13, now it was 14, now there's 15 different types of fresh bioorganic materials that are found in dinosaur bones. How do you preserve that over 65 million years? This doesn't look like a rock. It's stretchable. All you have to do is dissolve away the calcified matrix of the bone and you're left with this stretchy tissue that this one was found on the inside of a triceratops form. We've also found it in hadrosaurs, T-Rexes. You can watch the Is Genesis History movie for a longer take on that. But these soft tissues include blood cells, blood vessels, uh, and even the leading director of the Royal Terrell Museum, the largest dinosaur museum in the world, says that usually most of the original bone is still present in a dinosaur fossil. Look, when I was a kid, I was brought up under the, the understanding that dinosaur uh, bones and fossils were rocks. You guys, they're not rocks. Many times they are fully permineralized. They are turned into stone. But if you talk to the collectors and you go out and look at the scientific studies, you'll find that a good portion of dinosaur bones, particularly in the Cretaceous layers, are still organic bone material. They have not been turned into rocks. Here's just a quick list of 50 peer-reviewed scientific journals that have established this fact. And there's a quick picture that have shown, I think this one shows the 14 fresh bioorganic materials found in dinosaur bones. But the one that really gets me is collagen. Collagen is what's infused with bone mineral to make our bones both uh, so solid and stretchable at the same time. The collagen is, provides a soft tissue matrix that's inside of our bones. 
And scientists have come up with five different studies showing that collagen should not last more than a million years. So if collagen has a maximum life of only a million years, why do we find it in dinosaur bones that are supposedly 65 million years old? Just a couple more things here and I'll close down because my time is out. Uh, more recently, they found uh, some cartilage shells in a baby duckbill dinosaur and carbon-14 has also been found in dinosaur bones. Carbon-14 has a maximum shelf life of between 60 and 100,000 years, yet study after study consistently shows carbon-14 found in dinosaur bones. And interestingly, we have dinosaurs that have also been mummified. Here's a picture of Leonardo, one of the top seven mummified dinosaur uh, fossils in the world you can still see the stomach and gullet contents of this creature, what it was eating. Ferns and magnolias have still been recovered from this creature's gullet. So you certainly can't preserve that for 65 million years. Okay, so that's basically the, the wrap up of my presentation. I know it's a lot of information we covered quickly, but if you couple this information with the coal and oil deposits, you have all kinds of evidence lines that solidly point to the worldwide flood that's described in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. Looking for answers about what the Bible teaches about creation, the fossil record, dinosaurs? Download the Genesis Apologetics app from the iTunes or Google Play stores for answers to these questions and more.